What's going on guys, Bangle again here, coming back at you with another episode of Riverside Royals Dynasty. Currently recording this on January 30th. Every so often I like to update you guys on when I'm recording these versus uh, when you actually see them go out. So that's how far ahead I am right now. And I took a big hiatus in between the end of the last season and the end of this season, which let me just double check to see what season we're in. We're in season five. Yep, of course. And we have started out 0 and 2. Not exactly ideal. However, we are playing a new rival for the first time. And that is Virginia Tech. More like Vagina Tech because I'm ready to beat these pussies. Let's get into it. Before we get back to Riverside Dynasty, I did want to let you guys know that finally, I know you guys have been requesting it so much, I finally made it happen. Shirt jerseys for some of your favorite Riverside stars. Adam Daniel, Michael Hamm, Reggie Gonzalez, Greg Hall in the store, including a special black alternate as well. That's the front. This is the back. Check it out. Different players, different options. Link is down below. It says merch, bangles slash store creator dash spring dot com. It's, it's in the link. It looks a lot easier. Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about uh, the previous couple games. Last episode, if you saw it, obviously ended in heartbreak. Season one, or episode one of this season against Notre Dame. Week two, game one. Just outmatched, really. So, looking to uh, change things up in this week. Get our first win of the season. Didn't really want to start 0-2, but here we are. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. We're only 0-1 in the conference. This is an out-of-conference game, by the way, so it doesn't really... Uh, changed anything for conference standings but we need that first win to kind of build up momentum get moving in the right direction and hopefully virginia tech is a team that we can beat they are an 84 overall to our 90 so they aren't exactly a powerhouse but they are a pretty decent team so this is not going to be an easy one but hopefully a little bit easier than notre dame and usc looking for win number one let's get it here at lane stadium in Virginia let's get after it Virginia Tech wins the toss and elect to kick Phil Triplett back to return he had a big muffed punt in the game last week that effectively cost us the game there were a number of things that really uh, contributed to us losing Adam Daniels been turning over the ball at an alarming rate our defense has been nearly incapable of getting a stop and uh, yeah uh, we missed an extra point which made us go for two and also effectively ended up costing us the game so there have been a number of different things but we're going to move on past that and look at virginia tech just try to get the win here now i keep saying oh we're going to look past that and then i keep bringing up last week but it haunts me it'll live in my memory forever so all we can do is check down to reggie gonzalez and lose five Third and 15. We got to go for Ham. Daniel doesn't even come close to hitting it. <sighs> I, I don't know how we missed that throw. Adam, Daniel, please. I guess the uh, crowd's getting to him. This is a horrible start. It really is. Nearly jumped off sides. Hall was in the gap and then kind of got caught out of position. Ran by him. That only happens about mm, seven to ten times a game. Third and two. Trying to stop VT. Mark in the backfield. We got to watch out for an option play here. Tight end wearing number 91 is in motion. And they are going to throw. And they're going to throw over Bruce Clemens. Why did he keep running down? I tried to switch on and make a play, but he already came down far. Ooh. We're going to get saved here. I'm going to look at the replay anyway. As this one's coming back. Check this out. Check this out. Bruce Clemens, I felt like, was in perfect position to make the interception. And he just ran down too far. You can see the exact moment I switch on. But why is he running, like, so far underneath the ball? Like, it flies way over his head. If he just stays still, the ball goes right to him. Right to him. And he ran right underneath it. I don't understand that. We get saved a bit by the clipping. But, uh, I mean, why are my players 
Idiots. It's gonna be a run to Mark. Paul, oh, nice tackle. Okay, so everything's completely screwed up here. Adrian Chandler's playing middle linebacker. Yeah, that, that did not work at all. Chandler ends up making the tackle, but when you audible sometimes, as soon as you call a play, the positions get so screwed up. We had Craig Jackson at defensive tackle, Greg Hall at left end. Like, is it worth wasting a time out there? Maybe it is. Because is it really a waste if you can stop a 20-yard gain? Something we'll consider for the future for sure. But I, I mean, maybe in that situation, it's just too low stakes to waste the T a uh, timeout, T.O. I don't know. That could go either way. Second and four. Trying to cover the running back out of the backfield. Turn around, Tim Washington. I switch on and hold down, and he still doesn't move for two seconds. It's wide open anyway. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. And yeah, this couldn't really have started much worse for us. Three and out with uh, complete ineptitude on offense per usual this season. And then the defense was useless also as usual as USC has barely managed to beat Utah 35-32. I'll imagine they'll continue to rise in the ranks. But we'll take back over on offense. Need to be a lot better. I'd love to get the run game going, but when you get two yards on first down, I don't really want to go back to the run. And it's third and eight. Once again, having some trouble moving the football. That really isn't anything new this season. It's been pretty tough. And I don't know. Do we I went for Michael Ham? There's just not enough space to really do anything. And the offensive line really doesn't give us a ton of time. Is anything open on the left? No. I mean, you can say Hayford's open, but it, there's too much congestion over here. By the time we got that football away, look at how long this throw is. Like, it's it's not open. It really is not open. So, effectively, nothing's open. We're just screwed. That's, that's what we are. We'll have to punt again. The screen and Marcus Kerr came flying in. I didn't even see where the screen was designed to go. I didn't see the running back get out. Must have been a receiver screen, but I didn't see a receiver get open for a screen anyway. I have no idea what was going on there. Not complaining. Second and 18. They're going five wide. Let's get these guys backing up a little bit. Brooks in motion. And it's going to be an option play, and Kerr is there again. This drive is Marcus Kerr's coming out party. Back-to-back -back tackles for loss. Had the sack a play ago. That one design run not going to count as a sack. They're going five wide again. And we're playing real conservative here. Looks like a screen. And that football coming out. It's Kerr again. Hope jumps on it. The junior college transfer. But look at Marcus Kerr. They're not blocking him. He's being a menace. Three tackles for loss on three consecutive plays. And the offense, if you can even call it that, is at least in position to get points up. We started every drive with a Reggie Gonzalez run. That's the best one so far. Three yards. It's three times as many as all the yards he had previously. Even more. 0 for 2 on third down. You know what we're looking to do here? We are looking to run with Adam Daniel. And that really didn't work either. <laughs> Anything I try is not working. Did I miss somebody? I'm sure B was open at four minutes and eight seconds. Uh, yeah, there were there were there were things that were open or that would end up being open. Like this is Reggie Gonzalez too, but Justin Bennett I think is open enough. But at that point, obviously, I was already out of the pocket trying to make something happen with Adam Daniel, and they were all over it. But at least we're gonna get points. Provided Fitch drills this, which he does. 7-3, we're at least on the board. It's it's ugly. UCLA destroys Stanford. We got to get it figured out, man. Adam Daniel is not exactly looking like a Heisman caliber player. But our offensive line is pretty terrible. The receivers don't appear to be getting open. And we can't run the football. So pretty much every bad thing that could happen to an offense is happening to us. Five wide again. I mean, are they going to block Marcus Kerr this time? Quarterback going to keep it. 
He's going to change direction and eventually go down after five. That was a bizarre play. The blocking was incredible from the offensive line. They got a massive push just manhandling us down the field. It's second and five. We're going to bring Brown up. Playing the running back. It's going to be an option play. Brown in pursuit. Big tackle. Third and three. Coming down with Brown again. Hall needs to make the tackle and he got his ankles. Big TFL by the Hall monitor. Would Kyle Smith made a play on that? Kyle Smith, the true freshman outside linebacker, probably would have made a play on that. But it is our man, Greg Hall. Virginia Tech will punt. And we need to figure it out on offense. I need to uh, just do something different. Right now, we've shown a complete inability to move the football. They're going single high. That safety's coming up the blitz. We're throwing the ball quickly, and that's intercepted by James. Another turnover from Adam Daniel here to start this season. Uh, every single week, we're throwing picks now. And that one, I thought we had space. We had a free release with Justin Bennett, pretty much. I thought he was wide open. And that space went away pretty quickly. Let's take another look. Yes, felt like that was wide open. I thought we could thread the needle. And uh, evidently not. Yeah, unfortunate. This has been a really, really ugly season so far. Uh, but you know what? Some of you will really like this. It's Greg Hall trying to make the tackle. Because if I play well and don't really make too many mistakes, it's boring. And I get that comment. Uh, and if I make a mistake or two, or, or multiple, as has been the case lately, I suck at the game and I'm, I'm hard to watch because I'm so bad. So I like that there's no balance either way. I like that it's just, just negativity. Pretty awesome. But that's the end of the first quarter. The comments certainly don't get to me. Please, don't, please, don't even think that. We're up by four, second quarter. Uh, I do really need to start playing better, though. We need to get this team going, but some of the players have to make plays as well. I need these receivers to get open, stop sucking, and Marcus Kerr again makes a play. His second sack, his third sack, they're going to count it as. That's right. The other one was a sack and not a TFL. Wasn't a designed run. Marcus Kerr is having the absolute half of a lifetime, and that may have backed Virginia Tech out of field goal range. We'll get Phil Triplett back there in case there's a return opportunity. But I prefer this to just get bricked. It's going to be close. And that is wide right. And we'll take over with excellent field positioning. The kicker actually had the leg. Just missed it. Pretty much scraping the upright. And we need to figure out offense. We're going to try some read option. We got some blockers. Daniel makes a move. Daniel stays on his feet after a stumble. Going down the sideline. Big gain for Adam Daniel. I think now we have probably about 20 yards of offense after a 21-yard run. Yep, 21 total yards. It has been a struggle, really, for both offenses. They look good on the first drive and then have been completely awful after that as we'll throw it away. 0 for 3 on third down. Will it be different here? Lobbing it up for the tight end, and that is incomplete. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Reggie Gonzalez may have been getting open over the middle there, but trusted the tight end more. At least we get a good punt. Yeah, it's been ugly so far. I guess defenses have really uh, been the story of the game so far. Marcus Kerr for Riverside in particular has been unbelievable. And for Virginia Tech, I don't really know if you can point to a particular player. I feel like everyone has played uh, out of their freaking mind in the secondary, and their pass rush has been pretty good as well, as they will continue to try to get the quarterback run going and have no problem. 14 runs to just two passes for Virginia Tech. And keep in mind, they've tried uh, screens a couple times, as Neal will throw on the run and Anderson right there. Great coverage. Yeah, that's how. The hall monitor up the middle, screaming at him. Nine rushes, negative 1.6 average for this QB. Those are the uh, sacks that are really, really contributing to that crazy number. And they're going trips right, field side. 
Second and 15. Going to be a read option. And Phil Walker contains Neal for only four. Virginia Tech also has not been able to convert a third down. 0 for 3 for the Hokies. And here is their attempt. Neal looking to run. And he will get sacked. Phil Walker. I thought he was going to run. But just stayed kind of looking for options down the field. Didn't let go of the football. You can't hold it for that long. Eventually, somebody's going to get to you. And this time, it's Phil Walker. The third year now. Third year defensive tackle. Phil Walker's a junior. Time flies. Feels like just yesterday we were recruiting him. But it wasn't. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a while ago. As Phil Triple will make a man miss and spin to the outside. And eventually spin back. And as you can see, yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, great numbers there. <laughs> Why are you showing that? We actually have blocking for Gonzalez. We do. Gonzalez makes a man miss. He's going down the sideline. Stiff arming and knocked out of bounds after more than 20. Good run from Reggie Gonzalez, and that takes his average up to 5.2. As you can see, he only has 26 yards on the game. It has been very tough to get it going. And after these unsuccessful runs, I don't, don't, don't want to go back to him on second and long. I say that all the time, but... Yeah, I just don't. And we just didn't get a block. Didn't get any blocks. Had the opportunity to. Just decided not to for some reason. 63 just runs right past uh, would-be or potential tackler. That's a left tackle. Uh, I have no idea what he's doing. He is a freshman, so... It's not forgivable. But figure it out. But also, it's an excuse for him. It's third and four. Adam Daniel now three yards passing on the game. As I say that, we're going with five wide. And we're going for the tight end, Blake Hayford. Nice catch. And we'll move the chains. We fit that in there? Nope. Nope, it couldn't. That was way less open than I thought. And that is the second interception of the game for Adam Daniel. Uh, just tried to bite off a little bit more than we could chew. Linebacker had exceptional coverage, and uh, there was really no window. Big mistake again. Football came loose! Kerr recovers! Clemens got into the backfield ASAP, got destroyed, and then the hall monitor punched the football out. Please, offense, come alive. Start doing something. What are we doing? It's Justin Bennett, what a catch! We're getting way too aggressive while being conservative. It's a very odd combo. It works beautifully that time. Trusted Justin Bennett. He made a play. First and goal out of the hurry up. Trying to catch Virginia Tech off guard and they're all over it. I will say, I cannot emphasize how difficult offense has been. I mean, you've seen. But man, it, anything I try to do, I can't run the ball. I can't pass the ball. I'm sure I'm missing stuff while passing. Uh, it's inherently more difficult. And I'm really, really struggling as you guys have seen. Uh, it's been absolutely brutal. Backside slant, touchdown, John Humphreys. We've taken the lead. It has been so ugly. I hope the second half holds a different story. I really, really, really do. But holy hell. It has been so ugly. It's 10-7 Riverside. Okay, why are you lined up in like... It not That's not even a wide nine. He's lined up on the sideline playing defensive end. What was going on there? Neil gonna run. Somebody figure it out. Kerr's gonna end up tackling him. We tripped him up with Greg Hall. Went for a huge hit, but there was no hit stick for some reason. I mean, I, I guess it's, we just missed him enough that it wouldn't make a count. Uh, all right. Second and six. They're gonna throw it. Sam Brown is not at, on the team anymore. That's Joseph Brown and Wilfred, Wilfred Penne. Okay. Throw it. That's I I'm right there. Please. Virginia Tech down to their final timeout. 44 seconds remain in the half. They can really do whatever they want. I assume they're going to continue running the ball. It's exactly what they do. Back up the middle. Hall saves a touchdown, but they're going to have first and goal. And they're going to go hurry up actually. 
we are probably gonna run commit middle and of course they're gonna throw and it's a touchdown yeah yeah you take a team that's run the ball 20 times to throw the ball eight times even more than 20 by the way and then they have first and goal on the one and they choose to pass interesting it's because it's the freaking computer they know that i ran commit so like oh we're gonna pass oregon state blew out nevada 34 seconds three timeouts can we shake off the rust and finally move the football quickly i just don't really see much there what i'm learning with this slider set well other than that one it just feels like there's never going to be a safe throw they don't exist every throw is going to be threading the needle to the point of where it's either an interception uh or a completed pass and they've been interceptions a lot so far there's michael ham again he makes a man miss michael ham turn on the jets great run down the field 16 seconds to go do we try a timeout again we're gonna go hurry up instead i don't know if he got out of bounds or not clock obviously stopped for uh for first downs momentarily as we're gonna get to hayford we'll call a timeout here it's been a really good drive it's been way better things have been opening up and they really did not open up at all i'm, I'm tired of these tips popping up too things really did not open up at all you know the entire rest of the half Daniel will be on the move. We're just going to take off. And with four seconds, do we try a field goal? It's probably the wise move to just get points on the board. So we're going to try it. And that kick is slicing, but stays good. Good lord. That thing really wanted to miss. Thankfully, it didn't. And we will be down by just one point going into the second half well i mean you know what i want to say this game is uh disgusting it is what it is we're trying to get things going got to limit the turnovers yeah I, I feel like we can't run the ball i keep trying it keeps not working i don't really know what to do about that but we have just not been able to run the football period Virginia Tech will start with the football here in this second half. Defense has played fairly well. They've shut down the run real well. Whenever they try to pass, they're really successful. And they just really haven't done that a lot. So this is going to be a really interesting second half to see if the Hokies change their approach or go with kind of the same thing they've been doing, which has been ultimately a lot of, uh, you know, trips and and two by twos going four and sometimes even as many as, as five wide and then they run the ball it's very bizarre but they're getting a bunch of receivers out there and then we're seeing quarterback runs and, and now we have trips right just like we talked about and it's probably going to end up being a run but they're getting the numbers they're getting a mismatch but marcus kerr makes another tackle for loss that is his fifth of the game oh for four on third down here they go it's gonna be a screen and neil is pressured and sacked again it's marcus kerr his fourth sack of the game that is a new school record they just aren't blocking him and they keep trying screens this i don't know it hasn't necessarily been a dominant performance it's just virginia tech not knowing how to run their plays and the, the stat sheet has been stuffed officially. Marcus Kerr is putting up unreal numbers. I don't know what you can say about it, really. Read option. Decent enough blocks. Trying to get outside with Daniel. Stiff arming. And we get seven. I'll take seven yards. No problem. We've tried this halfback counter a number of times. I believe in it. I know it's going to be successful eventually that will work i don't know maybe we retire that one it's a play that works pretty often but really not so much this game i love this screen though especially when they press they get themselves out of position maybe we threw the ball a tick late usually there's opportunity to turn the ball up field there and it just never never happened oh my goodness daniel under pressure we're gonna try and stay in and throw that ball 
And they're going to say Bennett didn't get a foot down? Is that worth the challenge? It has The clock's still moving, so it, it, that doesn't make any sense. Either it's incomplete and the clock stops. <laughs> Why would the clock be moving? The clock doesn't move on incompletions. We're going to challenge it. The clock does not move when it's incomplete. Am, am I crazy? <laughs> What's going on here? Did he get a foot down? He definitely didn't. I don't know why the clock was moving. So we lose a timeout there. I think it was worth the challenge. I don't understand why the clock was moving. I figured that was like a little cheat. Where it's like, oh, the, the game's like, oh, the clock's going to keep moving because you caught the ball. But no. Quick throw to the tight end. Hayford wide open up the seam. Third and four. They're going three down linemen again. We're going to run the football. Offensive line. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is our tight end playing center? Is that why we're not getting a push? Why is Blake Hayford playing center? Now he's off the field now. I don't even know. People think this game's perfect. Far from it. Pitch to Gonzalez. He's wrapped up. We'll lose two. Read option. Daniel will keep it. And he'll walk into the end zone. Touchdown. Riverside back on top. And we'll go for two to make this a touchdown game. We needed something. The offense is starting to move a little bit. Still is anything but consistent. But it is starting to move. And we need two yards. I'm not afraid of running read option here. In fact, that's what we're going to do. I do want to run it to the other side, though. We're going to fake it to Corey. Oh, they got a guy on the edge now. Hold on. We're going to get Triplet out of there. We're going to get him to... Oh, man, I don't know. We're going to snap the ball. We got a blocker on that side. Daniel Power! And we'll get in. Getting Phil Triplett out there to lay another block actually worked out beautifully. Might try that again next time we're on offense. Because that worked really well. Because that probably would have been shut down. I don't know. It's something we're going to try again. But we'll take a seven-point lead. We're getting it going a bit. Daniel's getting it going a bit. Good tackle. Greg Hall. Like, I don't know, man. They keep going in these formations that you wouldn't expect to run, and they run the ball anyway. I think we're just going to come out in 5-2 and say, hey, you can come out with however many receivers you want. We're still going to get five defensive linemen out here and commit to stopping the run. That's Craig Jackson in the backfield. Nice tackle. I don't know why they're showing Marcus Curry. He's got a great game. He didn't do anything there. That's all Craig Jackson. It's third and 15. I mean, surely, surely we're okay to go with three down linemen this time. Third and 15. We're going to get Greg Hall closer to the sticks. And Brown, we're going to use ourself. And they can check down if they want to. Neil under pressure breaks and Adrian Chandler sacking Craig Jackson. Is being a real impact player on this drive. Finishes up. And it's 4th and 22. Of course the Hokies will punt. And this is our opportunity to go ahead in the game. By a lot. Two possession game right here. We're going to try and block this. Can't do it. But we should have space. This could be a really good return from Triplet. He'll juke back inside. Break a tackle. And we only need to go 35 yards. Look at Virginia Tech. We've committed to stopping the run, and they've had no answer for it. Negative 15 yards here in the third quarter. Beautiful throw to John Humphreys. Good route. I mean, when these guys get as open as they do sometimes, it makes these throws a no-brainer. But some of them, you know, haven't been so easy, obviously. Some of these decisions have been a little bit more difficult. As we'll go read option here. Gonzalez will take it. We got a block. He broke a tackle and gets seven. We're going to try a screen. I think it's circle. There's Ham. Kind of hit off his hands. It wouldn't let me R2 to see. I couldn't zoom out of the play. Which is pretty frustrating. Cross flood has been so terrible today. Do we try slants? I really do not like slants. But we obviously have the option to run as well. Yeah, we're going to change this to a Reggie Gonzalez run. We're going to go shotgun. We have blockers. Uh, that's unbelievable. 
That's actually unbelievable. Completely unblocked. I need... I, who, whose responsibility would that have been? It had to be the left guard. He double teams the freaking nose. And leaves the one guy we needed to block unblocked. Why are you double teaming the nose tackle? Oh my god. We're going to get the field goal up. And that is good. We'll take a 10-point lead here deep into the third quarter. Unacceptable. Stupid offensive line. These are the reasons we lose games. It's the little mistakes that you don't really think are huge mistakes at the time. And then they add up. Get outside. Jackson couldn't really make the play, but he also did. That makes sense. Is it insane to go zero blitz here? Yes, but also no. Because they're going to run the football. Okay, I, why did they pick that hole, dude? Because <laughs> it was open. There, there's your answer. I mean, it, it looked like a screen, and it's going to look like a user pick. Easy reads. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, easy reads. First incompletion of the game is a Greg Hall interception. Turning point in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Turning point in the game. Phil Triplett out to the left. Extra blocker. Read option. Works beautifully. Daniel makes a man miss. Daniel has wheels. Shot to the end zone. Daniel dives. Touchdown. 41 yards to the house. And that's why he's the Heisman favorite. Slow start. Big finish. Going to be 31-14 Riverside. We are a second half team still. The more some things change, the more they stay the same. Big second half for the Royals. Defense started going and the offense followed suit. They want to fake you out. They're like, we're not running the ball. We have, we have four receivers. Yes, they are. They still get three somehow. And that is the end of the third quarter. Virginia Tech really throwing this game away. Or running this game away is probably a more apt description based on what their offenses look like. But yeah. We've really turned it on. I'm loving it. And uh, it feels good to be, you know, in the driver's seat. Probably going to win this game. Are they actually going to throw? Jackson tried to hit him. We got to make a tackle. Thank you, Tim. That's fine. We have a lead. We'll get aggressive. We'll try to make big plays to end the game. That's totally fine. If they want to have these little dink and dunks, and I got 15 yards really, you know, can add up pretty quickly, but that was a short throw where he turned up field. But we want to stay aggressive. We want to make these plays, and that's got to be a pick. Allen Hart off his hands. It just sucks when you have the game over and done with as they are 0 for 6 on third down. But the game was over. We had it. Interception, Allen Hart. Forget about it. And now they have life. Fourth and one. Four down territory. Will they go for it? They will. And I think we can expect a run here. It's a long yard. So we do have that going for us. Do we take the safety up? I think it's too risky. It's going to be a run. And it's going to be a Craig Jackson big tackle for loss. Mark loses four. Hall was in there as well. But it's Craig Jackson making some really big plays this game. Our defense has really stepped it up to another level. And uh, we're going to look to end it here. Sick throw, Adam. Daniel going to get out. Turn up the field. Daniel on the run. We're not going down. And maybe we should have. We're going to fumble the football. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I, I already know. I'm not. It doesn't matter. Oh, Bangley, you should have went down. Oh. Obviously. <laughs> I know. But that's not fun. Fumbles aren't fun either, though. Neil under pressure. He's sacked. It's Adrian Chandler. Just want to play more defense. Stat pad. <laughs> Oh, I love the 5-2. Yeah, keep running the ball. Keep holding onto the football forever. Do all these different things. Second and 17. 
They are going to throw. No one was close. No one was close. You got to make a play. Joseph Brown can't do it. Washington can't do it. And it's a Justin Mark touchdown. Virginia Tech going to bring it within 10. My DBs are such freaking morons. Who Gonzalez. We'll take that. That's a nice run. Uh, Adam Daniels turned into a turnover machine. Which I really hate. A lot of them. Yes, I'm aware. My fault. But it's Adam Daniel. Okay? That's the scapegoat. Daniel will take it on read option. Haven't learned my lesson. Don't worry. Still not sliding. <laughs> Adam Daniel may be under 200 yards. Gonzalez is injured because obviously he is. Uh, it wouldn't be a game if he wasn't. Oh, good blocks. Triple it out to the next level. And that's a nice game. Yeah, I was going to say, Adam Daniel going to be held under 200 yards passing, which is not something that happens very often. It's going to be third and six. We are still in the driver's seat. Up by two possessions. If we were up by only a touchdown, or even a field goal, obviously, would be in really bad shape. But that's not the case. As we'll hit Tarek Smith for the nine-yard catch. I need a good throw on the run. Daniel, end zone, dagger. Michael Ham touchdown. They play the run. You fake him out. You go with the pass. Michael Ham got open deep. I can't remember the last time that happened. It's been so long. Justin Bennett was also pretty open. Complete breakdown in the secondary. And uh, we've completely iced them. Florida, 45-38, takes down number 11, Tennessee. Anthony Richardson has a five-touchdown game. Unreal from Anthony Richardson, AR-15. Check down, please. He's going to launch a deep. Clemens! My, my, oh, God. We're right there. He goes up to catch it. He whiffs again. <laughs> my safeties, dude, are so bad. They're so bad. They try, but they're so bad. And it's a 10-point game again. Still not really worried, but it's annoying. Reggie back in the game. They have nobody on this left side. They have nobody. Gonzalez is going to be basically one-on-one. -on -one. He'll make a miss. Gonzalez, speed to the end zone, breaking a tackle, and it's a 24-yard gain, but he is short. I don't know why we got the uh, Coach Dangus looking for a timeout. I don't know why the clock's not... I didn't call a timeout. We only had... To, oh, Virginia Tech had a timeout. But why did it show Coach Dang is taking it? I'm not really sure. Daniel. Corey Warren was wide open in the end zone and ran away from the ball. You cannot make this up. We're looking to do it again. I knew he was going to bounce off. Humphreys deserves it. Touchdown, John Humphreys, his second of the game. Still a three-touchdown game from Adam Daniel. Bizarre game. Very odd. Tale of two halves, really. Now, I guess we can kind of point to some of the obvious things for the turnaround here, where as soon as we kind of got the run game going, with read option in particular, uh, the offense opened up vertically at least a little bit. And, uh, yeah, Adam Daniel was looking disgustingly bad in the first half and slightly better in the second half, for sure. Part of that's just easing into the game, too, but... Yeah, he missed some throws, too. As Neal will get sacked. That's the junior college transfer, John Holt, making an impact in this game. Hokies going hurry up. They're going to spike it. You know what's interesting? If we get, I think, just three yards passing with Adam Daniel... He'll have a 200-yard game. We're in Heisman contention. We need we need every bit of help we can get. Lob to Bennett, and that's it. Game over. Riverside wins. Daniel goes over 200. And I said it a lot this game, but it was really ugly. Really hard-fought win. The defense played amazingly. And the offense struggled a lot. The receivers just... And I'm sure I missed a lot of open guys. But to me, just weren't good enough to get open consistently. And I didn't find them a lot. 
and that makes it incredibly tough to win and move the football especially when you can't run the ball the first like seven or eight games or uh, runs of the game as adam daniel had five total touchdowns the first like seven or eight runs of the game with reggie gonzalez basically went for nothing i think we had one breakaway run in there but so many either negative or one yard gains and i negative gain i get that that's an oxymoron but yeah dude it was it was a real struggle I don't know how we came away with 45 points. I feel like if Virginia Tech's offense, who did end up scoring 28, I feel like if their offense was any bit decent at all, we would have beat them. But, or, but you know, more convincingly, it's still pretty good. I mean, Gonzalez got it going a bit in the second half. Daniel obviously got it going a you know, big time. Five total touchdowns, two on the ground. Michael Hamm had a big touchdown. John Humphreys had two. But it was tough to throw the ball consistently, obviously. And then defensively, Greg Hall was all over the field. The tackles for loss were crazy. Six for Marcus Kerr, four sacks. Greg Hall had five for loss. Jackson had three for loss. Obviously, the four sacks for Kerr is just crazy. But one for Holt, one for Chandler, Jackson, and Phil Walker. And then the interception, the user pick from Greg Hall was pretty big too. He also forced a fumble. I mean, it seemed like Kerr and Hall were battling to see who would end up getting the thumbnail. And they both played crazy well. Craig Hall with five tackles for loss, led the team in tackles, had the pick, forced a fumble, but Kerr with a forced fumble, fumble recovery, four sacks, six for loss. Crazy performance. He's going to earn it. Yeah, feels awesome to get back in the win column. First win of the year. And we have a big time rematch in week five. It is the college football playoff semifinal rematch against akron the worst team we've played all year probably the worst team we will play all year a lot of recruits ready to visit by the way with justin stevens and i'll go over recruiting at length here um we just wanted to get into it where we could stay get him to visit stay in the race and play it to the offseason the fact that these guys are ready to visit is going to be big for us. It's going to be really, really big. Akron's 2-1. What's their record? Or their rating? They're 77 overall. Number one Bama's week six. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be the worst team we play all year. Number one Bama. Man, that's a bad decision, you know, in hindsight. We're in a battle for some of these guys, huh? He's visiting Oregon week six. We could get a commit though after this game. Could happen. Let's go ahead and get some of these guys scheduled for visits. And I, a lot of them just will be this week. Now we keep losing on Justin Stevens. I understand that. I know it seems crazy to keep going after him when we keep losing, but he's so amazing. And if we can just get to the visit he goes to oregon week six does he want to go to oregon more than us but not really usc's week 14 and i wouldn't be shocked if he ends up going there depending on what happens this visit we are either going to take justin stevens off the board or keep him on which i hope it's keep him on but uh <laughs> it's gonna be tough we're gaining on kevin mitchell certainly gaining on him no complimentary visits. I think we're just going to schedule against Akron. Why not? So many complimentary visits for Robert Davis. So we're going to do Akron. Brett Johnson. Guess what? Akron. Todd Carter. Wait, what about Todd Carter? Todd Carter's good. Todd Carter's going to join the team probably. We're going to do against Akron. Why not? And then Clarence Brown. You guys are going to be shocked by this. But I'm thinking maybe what about against akron hey that that has a nice ring to it virginia tech gained on us despite the fact that we railed them it's gonna be against akron what about some of these guys down here minus 12 25 on brian barber georgia southern is that a joke he's only 28 percent locked i'm gonna look at him all right goodbye <laughs> kenny hamby another one word i think we're in it despite being down big depending on how good he is 
we're gonna at least take a look 95 speed 95 juke i don't know if he looks like a running back i don't he's just he's really more fast than anything elusiveness and juke are really high speed's really high agility's pretty good i think he is a running back i know stiff arm ball carry vision low but i'm trying to think of how he would fit into my team i see zone and man i see that tackling is low it's an interesting player i'm gonna free up some points to look at some of these other players we have a lot of guys to look at actually we really do Ooh, sean sullivan i could see him being a royal could this be the next craig jackson type player he's six seven goodness we should be getting a lot of points freed up this week no matter what a lot of guys will either be uh, committing or being really close to committing or we're taking them off the board so a lot of things are happening a lot of things are happening but i think i'm gonna call it an episode here i'd love for nick hawkins to commit week five is gonna be a huge one we need to murder akron there's no way around it have to kill him all right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.